Okay, um, in regard to uh, what happens in asset destruction, um, extending the idea uh, a little bit here. Um, okay, first of all, um, what are the overrides? What, uh, you know, are the possibilities there? Um, does the override present you with a vulnerability? Uh, can uh, an attacker, or an adversary, um, uh, trigger the override uh, in some way? Is you know, is there a, a possible failure mode there? Uh, but in addition, um, uh, we've got to look at. Uh, uh, fail safe and, and defaults and that sort of thing and having raised the issue of fail safe uh, there are a couple of um, fairly significant uh, points to address in that regard uh, fail safe generally speaking uh, people tend to think of it uh, you know from the movies and, and books and that sort of thing as um, if uh, you know something untoward happens, then uh, this triggers some kind of automatic response. Uh, and in most of those books and movies, uh, uh, an awful lot of you know they, they turn on the fact that uh, the automatic response is. Uh, responsible for asset destruction. So, you know, there's there's some examples there of, of the asset destruction idea. Uh, but um, the thing is that those uh, books and movies are um, wrong. Uh, or at least, you know, they, they are um, looking at it one way and, and the terminology doesn't support it. Um, there is fail-safe and there is fail secure. Um, fail safe uh, is um, well. It uh, it goes by another name, and that's fail open. Uh, whereas fail secure is uh, uh, the the alternative term for that is fail closed. And just to give you an example. Uh, here, if you've got a uh, a fire happening, um, an awful lot of places will have uh, electric doors, and the the doors are controlled by magnetic locks. When the power is engaged, the door is locked. When the power is off, the door is open. Now, in the case of fire or disaster or power failure, that is going to fail open. You know, the, the doors are not going to be locked, and which is a good thing in terms of safety. That is fail safe. Um, that means that if, for example, there is a fire uh, and the fire happens to knock out the power, the, the doors are open, people can get out. You know, so that's, that's a safety feature. Now, if, uh, I mean, you know, there's uh, a possibility of intrusion there, and, you know, that is something that you have to uh, consider. That is something that you have to uh, possibly add an additional layer of protection or another safeguard for, whatever. But at least, you know, that particular control does not put people in danger. Now, that is not always the case. And as is often the case with examples here. The counter example is from the military. If you are on a military base, a very high security military base, and uh, there are fire doors, and you, you know, the alarms go off, uh, and you are near one of those fire doors, get out of the way. Do not stand in the doorway. The fire doors will shut. And if you are in the way, the fire doors will still shut. They don't care that you are there. That is fail secure. And in, in some cases, the doors will shut very suddenly because they are propelled by explosive bolts. 
So if you're in the way, too bad for you. The door is going to close. Um, as I say, you know, that is, that is fail secure. Um, that is very secure, but it is not necessarily safe. That is why you only find these kinds of examples in uh, military installations. And as I say, you know, very high security military installations at that. Um, this is an example of compartmentalized security. And this is something that you do not want to install in, uh, in a, you know, an ordinary residence. Uh, this is inappropriate to the situation. But that is the difference between fail safe and fail secure. And you will encounter this in, you know, as I say, you know, it's a general security principle and um, it is not one that people talk about very frequently. Uh, but it is something that you will need to know about. Uh, even though you may never encounter it in your career if you don't work on military bases. However, so, uh, look for uh, issues of fail-safe and fail-secure. Um, uh, we have to consider residuals. Um, you know, the uh, issue of residual risk, um, uh, similar here, you know, what happens, what is left over when a safeguard, a countermeasure, a control is triggered. Um, what happens in terms of a reset? You know, uh, how, uh, what does it take to reset? What um, happens during a reset? What uh, condition is the system in during a, a reset? And again, you know, uh, do we have to take additional steps to protect our asset during a, a reset. How is the asset protected um, while the reset is going on? Uh, a number of different issues. Again, all related to our choice of uh, controls, countermeasures and safeguards. Uh, you know, all of these things uh, do have to be considered uh, when we are uh, dealing with these types of issues when we are dealing with that uh, choice. So,